Hi, welcome to the session on CMA part 2, Strategic Financial Management. Strategic Financial Management, in which we'll be discussing about CVP analysis. CVP analysis stands for Cost, Volume, Profit Analysis. Cost, Volume, Profit Analysis. CVP Analysis. Cost, Volume, Profit Analysis is the important topic on CMA Part 2, highly tested. Let's now discuss about Cost, Volume, Profit Analysis. CVP analysis, cost, volume, profit analysis. Just pay attention on three terms, cost, volume, and profit. How the profit is going to change due to different types of costs and the difference in the volumes. Okay, so when you have some cost here is there any control we can have that will have an impact on the profit likewise if i you know change the quantity the change in the quantity produced and sold what is the impact on my profit so we are going to analyze the change in the costs and change in the quantities on the profits when I say profit, profit is an operating profit. Operating profit means the profit before interest and taxes, which tells us the performance of the business. Profit before interest and taxes, which tells us the performance of the business. So we are going to test the change in sales volume, change in the sales price, change in the cost structure is going to have an impact on the profitability of the company. So it is used in a managerial decisions. How change in these components will have an impact on our profit. So a kind of sensitivity analysis we will conduct to see the changes in profit that is operating profit a few examples here how many units that are to be produced and sold to break even to break even means at least my firm will be on a point where there will be no loss no profit say for example my entire cost of the operations is say for example hundred thousand dollars if my sales are also hundred thousand dollars my firm is going to have a break even means what no profit no loss now how much of this sales hundred thousand is going to be earned in a period of you know 12 months whether this 100,000 we are going to own in just two months time or three months time. So that what happens our remaining period, say for example, I can make this 100,000 in three months time. The remaining nine months, yes, I will enjoy the profits. So I will be on break even in three months time out of 12. So the remaining nine months is going to give me the profits. Next how many units are to be sold to earn a desired amount of profit. I invested $1 million in the business and my expected rate of return on this is say 15%. Means what? I must earn $150,000 of profit this year. This is the target. This is the return on investment I'm expecting. So to, to get this profit, how many units are to be produced and sold? So when you, when you know well in advance, 
you can fix it in the budget right okay and whether we can invest further okay whether we can invest further be it in a advertisement be it in a, you know uh, adding some you know uh, advanced technology based machinery etc so that we can reduce the labor cost and how it is going to affect my profit okay and uh, advertisements promotions sometimes you know uh, increasing or decreasing of the sales price how it is going to affect so a complete study of the changes in quantity change in the sales due to change in the selling price change in the costs how these are all going to have an impact on my profit so in this topic we will be using some formula to find the profit in a different mode that is net income equals to total revenue minus total cost revenues are nothing but the sales revenues are nothing but the sales so when you say total revenue it is the selling price per unit times number of units we are going to sell we are selling at the rate of say for example ten dollars and the number of units sold is say five thousand okay so the total revenue is fifty thousand dollars all right and the total cost total cost a cost in a firm is classified into variable cost and the fixed cost we will have a detailed study about the variable cost and the fixed cost in few minutes now variable cost and total fixed cost will give you the total cost so you arrived at 50000 revenues the variable cost is say for example $5,000 or $5 per unit and the fixed cost is say $5,000 okay so variable cost is $5 per unit per unit so how many units you are producing and selling yeah 5000 so your total cost is going to be the variable cost which is 5000 times $5 plus the fixed cost of 5000 will give you 30000 we are going to get a profit of twenty thousand dollars fifty thousand revenue minus thirty thousand the total cost which includes variable cost and fixed cost so now we can say that the net profit equals to our profit equals to the number of units what you sell minus the uh, sorry times the selling price minus variable cost minus fixed cost let me apply this with our numbers we are selling 5000 units with a selling price of how much 10 dollars minus variable cost of 5 dollars and minus there is a fixed cost of 5000 dollars yeah so this is going to be 25000 yeah times this 5 minus 5000 your profit is twenty thousand dollars yeah so we'll discuss in detail about what is fixed cost what is variable cost now okay right now this equation we are going to frame in a statement format like this sales total sales that is fifty thousand variable cost the cost per unit multiplied by the number of units will give us contribution we'll discuss in detail about contribution minus fixed cost will give you income yeah so sales minus variable cost equals to contribution contribution minus fixed cost equals to income profit so it is very uh, you know early to discuss about variable cost fixed cost and contribution but just note it down this is the income statement we use in CVP analysis. S minus V equals to C. C minus F equals to profit.
Now, in any organization, whether it is a manufacturing or trading or service, we can observe some costs. These costs are of three types. Fixed costs, variable costs, and mixed cost. Fixed cost, variable cost, and mixed cost. Let us study in detail about fixed, variable, and mixed. Please put an X mark here in your notes, mixed cost, because our CVP analysis does not consider mixed cost. There is an assumption in CVP analysis that we will have only fixed and variable, but no mixed cost. So put an X mark next to your notes, mixed cost. Okay. Right. Fixed cost. Your amount remains same, whatever be the activity level. During this session, we will be using a term called activity. Activity level means your production capacity. Like say, for example, you produce 10,000 units and sell, or 8,000 units or sell, your fixed cost will remain same. Same like your telephone bill, which you pay to the local you know the telecom department the fee monthly fee of say for example two hundred dollars okay plus call charge how many calls you make that's this is a fixed bill you know for it now let me give an example another example here rent of the factory building you say for example ten thousand dollars whether you produce ten thousand units in a month 8,000 units in the other month, your rent will remain same, $10,000 per month. Okay, so fixed cost remain constant within the activity level, within the relevant range. It will remain same. Now, when you say fixed cost remain same, yes, you produce 10,000, 8,000, whatever the number of units you produce, your fixed cost is an amount is same. Okay, you can see here this is a fixed cost line. Irrespective of the number of units you produced, the fixed cost amount will remain same. But fixed cost per unit, yes, it changes. It varies. Okay, please write a note that the fixed cost as an amount is constant, but per unit is variable. Fixed cost as an amount is constant, but per unit is variable. Okay. Now let us see with, a, with an example, fixed cost as an amount, okay, right? Say you have a rent of how much? Say $10,000 in the month of January, you produced, or oh sorry, you paid a rent of $10,000. Okay, in the month of February, you produced 8,000 units, but still you are paying $10,000, number of units produced, 10,000, 8,000. See here, fixed cost per unit is $1. February, it is gone up, so it varies. In the month of March, say for example, you produced 12,000, 12,000. It will get reduced, isn't it? So, what do you know about this? Fixed cost as an amount is constant, but per unit is variable. Per unit is variable. In the next month, it is going to be 0 0.83 per month, 83 cents per month. So companies try to produce more goods to get the advantage of fixed cost. You can see here, less the number of units you produce, higher the fixed cost per unit. So better you use the good capacity level, okay? Then variable cost. What is a variable cost? Variable cost varies according to the activity level. More units you produce, higher the cost. Higher the production, higher the cost is. Now, let me give an example. Here, we have variable cost. As an amount, 
say for example 15 dollars per unit 15 dollars per unit a material cost you produce in the month of january say 10000 units it is going to be how much 150000 your variable cost is 150000 in the month of february you produced only 8000 units then it is going to be 120000 but you see here in february it is 15 dollars in january it is 15 dollars per unit is 15 dollars remain constant so what do you understand here variable cost as an amount it varies as an amount it varies but per unit is constant per unit is constant okay so it changes when the activity level changes but per unit remains same okay whereas variable cost or fixed cost as an amount it is constant but per unit is variable okay say for example here you have a meal cost of three dollars per unit you are expecting around 2000 passengers the cost is going to be 6000 this one you can budget that 6000 is a variable cost if the number of passengers is not 2000 it is 1500 it is going to be 4500 dollars it varies it varies it changes but you see variable cost per unit remain same as the activity level changes the total variable cost will change but per unit cost will remain same so this is the nature of the variable cost as the volume increases cost will also increase you can take, see the example here one more example i have a fixed cost of seven thousand five hundred dollars and i have a variable cost of 7.5 dollars per unit i produce say 1000 units 7500 i produce say for example 2500 7500 my landlord does not increase or decrease the rent for a one one you know one year period all right so you produce whatever you can the rental cost will remain same if this is an example of rent see fixed cost per unit is gradually decreasing if you use capacity level higher level your fixed cost is reduced from 7.5 dollars to 75 cents this is where we get an advantage so companies try to use a maximum capacity available to get the advantage of this fixed cost say for example your company is operating at 50 percent capacity producing only 5000 units but you have a capacity to produce 10000 units your place your missionary your people okay but you are operating at only 50 percent capacity what is your fixed cost here per unit 1.5 dollars okay and say for example there is a customer he is ready to buy another 5000 units okay straight away you will save 0.75 per unit or not 1.5 will be reduced to 75 cents so you can think of this can i reduce some price to attract this customer yes why because your fixed cost is going to reduce by 50 percent from 5000 level to 10000 level okay so when the activity level changes fixed cost per unit will change whereas the variable cost it is remain constant per unit remain constant per unit that is 7.5 dollars per unit okay right so when you produce say for example 1000 units variable cost 7.5 it is going to be how much 7500 dollars when you produce 10000 at the rate of 7.5 it will be 75000 just cross check divided by 1000 units you produced it is going to be 7.5 produced by 10,000 units here divided by 10,000 units is 7.5 okay so variable cost per unit remain constant this is what you need to know that how we get benefit from the fixed cost per unit when we increase the capacity 
the activity level. The activity level is also known as the relevant range. So you have a production capacity of 10,000 units. Try to improve your capacity level. Try to improve your capacity level by maximizing by maximizing the, the you know the production and uh, getting the market for your products and services. Now we discussed about uh, mixed cost, uh, sorry, fixed cost and variable cost. Then what is a mixed cost? A mixed cost is a cost which has a flavor of both fixed and variable. So some portion of cost can be fixed and the remaining portion can be variable. Most of you can experience the utility bill like electricity. There will be some fixed fee even though you don't use at all there will be some fee plus there will be some charge per unit okay you consume all right say for example the electricity department is charging hundred dollars per month plus per kilowatt hour used five dollars so how many kilowatt hours you used okay that will be multiplied with by to find the total electricity bill for a particular time period let me give another example i had a salesman i hired a sales manager with two thousand dollars per month salary and to motivate him i told him that this is not fixed boss you have other option as well for every additional unit you sell Say for example, I'll give you a target that you need to sell 100 units. Over and above 100 units you sell, I will pay you $2 per unit as you know the incentive per unit. So you sell 100 units, relax, you will get $2,000. You sell 150 units, I gave you a target of 100 units, you sold 50 units extra, you will get some incentive that is hundred dollars so your pay is going to be two thousand one hundred dollars which has a flavor of both fixed and variable when a single cost has a flavor of both fixed and variable we call it as mixed cost mixed cost is a combination of both fixed and variable yeah right and now you say for example next month he is very happy he sold 200 units Okay, your target is what? 100 units. You sold 200 units. You are eligible for what? $2 on 100 units of extra units you sold. Okay, so your incentive is going to be $200. This month you are going to take a pay of $2,200. See, in, in January, say for example, in January, his fixed salary was $2,000. Okay, but the variable portion is what hundred dollars in february is a fixed salary was two thousand but variable portion was what two hundred dollars okay it has a both it has both fixed and a variable okay any cost which has a flavor of both fixed and variable is called mixed cost right so, so to some extent it is fixed the other is the variable and uh, you are looking at this relevant range activity level which is nothing but a time period it can be a time period like your landlord charges you the rent on yearly basis okay so relevant range is one year in this example your depreciation depreciation on machinery is charged at the rate of say 20 percent right on 100,000 value of the machinery, the relevant range is here 100,000 times 20%. Likewise, insurance of the factory building, property taxes of the factory building, or the quantity, the quantity what you can produce with the resources available. That is called relevant range. So within the relevant range, the cost will remain same, but if the relevant range increases some cost will respond 
like say for example up to 10000 units of capacity your fixed cost is going to be 40000 but doesn't mean that the fixed cost will remain same forever no say for example you increase your capacity that you are getting lots of orders obviously you need to add one more machine one more manager production manager the fixed cost will respond so up to 10000 units whether you produce 5000 units 8000 units 9000 units fixed cost will remain same but doesn't mean that even if you produce 100000 units your fixed cost will remain same no relevant range dist relevant range is different now so from 10000 to 20000 say for example your fixed cost is increasing to what 80000 so you produce your 16,000 units, still your fixed cost is going to be 80,000. So as the relevant range changes, your fixed cost will respond. All right. So you need to know, first of all, what is the maximum capacity of my company? Say my company could, can produce a 10,000 units max to max. So within this 10,000, from 0 to 10,000, your fixed cost will remain same. But if goes beyond this, your production level goes beyond this, your fixed cost will respond. So what you need to understand is fixed costs are constant within a relevant range. Fixed costs are constant within a relevant range. Okay. So now we discussed about the fixed cost, the variable cost and the mixed cost. Now let us see some assumptions of CVP analysis. During this analysis, we are going to assume these points that the cost in a CVP analysis can be either fixed or variable, but no mixed costs. Please remember no mixed costs. So we do not consider this at all. Then the cost CVP relationships are linear over the wide range of production and sales. In a sense, we do not have any beginning inventory. We do not have any ending inventory. What does it mean? All the units produced are sold. It is an assumption that there will be no beginning and ending inventory. It means that what we produced will be sold. Okay, so production equals to sold. Got it. Then whatever we assume in the analysis at the beginning, sales price, unit variable cost, the total fixed cost will remain same within the relevant range. Say for example, a selling price per unit is $10. Variable cost per unit is say $2. Total fixed cost say $50,000. Within a relevant range with this capacity of 10,000 units. So when you analyze this with 10,000 units, 2,000 units, 5,000 units, 6,000 units, within 10,000 units, this will remain same. Selling price per unit, variable cost per unit, and fixed cost per unit will remain same within the relevant range. Sales price is constant. If selling price changes, how this is going to impact my profit? Yes, we will do that later. But in assumptions, what we uh, fix is selling price, variable cost, fixed cost, etc. The next point is the multi-product companies. Okay multi product companies we are selling product a product b product c okay so sales mix is constant sales mix is constant say for example if i sell 100 units of a i'll be selling 50 units of b and i'll be selling say for example 150 units of c so this is a sales mix combination okay so it is going to be in the ratio of what 2 is to 1 is to 3. So this ratio will follow. This mix percentage will follow. We assume that this is a sales mix which is going to be constant in a CVP analysis. Okay. And uh, these points 
linear and inventories remain same that is whatever the number of units you produce that is going to be sold nothing is going to be in the inventory so we are not going to maintain any inventory this is an assumption of course in practical it is not possible but in assumptions in analysis we are going to consider this point that all the units are that the all the units which are produced are going to be sold okay now let us uh, understand what is a contribution margin income statement a contribution margin income statement tells us that sales minus variable cost will give us contribution margin sales minus variable cost gives us what contribution contribution is profit subject to fixed cost contribution is profit subject to fixed cost okay and fixed cost is deducted from contribution to arrive at operating income so you can either use in a equation format sales minus variable cost minus fixed cost equals to what profit operating profit sales minus you know variable cost what do you call it is sales minus variable cost what is it contribution can i say s minus v contribution c s minus v equals to c yeah and minus f fixed cost equals to p c minus f equals to p okay contribution is not the gross profit because this variable cost can consist of manufacturing expenses non manufacturing expenses so do not call contribution as gross profit because we get gross profit only when you deduct you know manufacturing expenses right so likewise fixed cost also you may have manufacturing expenses non manufacturing expenses like admin selling and distribution so do not name contribution as gross profit it is not the gross profit contribution is a profit subject to fixed cost now you see here uh, if you want to increase this operating profit as you know that the fixed cost remain constant you can't do anything here your landlord will not decrease the rent increase the rent within the relevant range but what else you can do you want to improve the contribution here right yes how can you improve the contribution by controlling the variable cost okay and by increasing the revenues this is what you can do to improve your operating income so when you say s minus v minus f equals to p see the change in profit profit increases when your sales increase when your variable costs are controlled i am not doing anything with the fixed cost likewise your profit is going to be affected the other way when your sales decrease when your variable cost increase fixed cost i am keeping remain constant so remember these points any company which wants to improve the operating income should increase the contribution improve the contribution by increasing the sales and controlling the variable cost now let us see from this example what is the operating income see units produced in cvp analysis what i said all the units produced are to be sold linear no so let us not consider this 8000 8, units let us not consider it this moment okay so in cvp analysis we see that all the units are all the units that are produced are sold now 10000 units you are going to sell what is the selling price 100 dollars what is the variable cost you have a variable cost material cost labor cost variable overheads variable selling expenses 20 15 9 and what is that 5 dollars what is the amount here total variable cost is total variable cost is 49 yeah 
right so this is the selling price per unit this is a variable cost per unit and i multiplied with 10000 10000 units here minus fixed cost i have fixed cost here fixed overhead manufacturing overhead is 48000 fixed selling administration overheads are 112 overheads are nothing but expenses indirect expenses yeah so what is the total fixed cost here 48000 plus 112000 what is that it is going to be 160000 yes this is a fixed cost now let us deduct uh, calculate this amount 100 minus 49 that is 51 51 minus uh, times 10000 what is that 510000 minus the fixed cost of 160000 will give us an operating income of how much 350000 this is the operating income i generated if i produce and sell 10000 units at the rate of 100 dollars and the variable cost total is 49 dollars okay and the fixed cost is say 160000 dollars provided if all these are correct then my operating profit is going to be 350000 then you as a management accountant will be analyzing what happens if i decrease my selling price from 100 to 95 will i be able to sell more units come on do an analysis okay what happens if i reduce the variable cost to 47 instead of 49 there is a wastage i found in a overheads let us reduce it let us control control it that will improve my operating income why this fixed cost is this much okay so you identified some ideal fixed cost which are not going to give you any kind of you know benefit so you reduced it that will reflect in your operating income come on start cvp analysis okay okay concentrating on all these now what happens if you produce 10000 units but you sell only 8000 units your fixed cost will remain same whether you produce 8000 or 10000 units or you know 9000 units whatever the number of units you sold you will get this amount right this is a 49 min 100 minus 49 you will get 51 51 times 8000 how much is that 51 times 8000 contribution is 51 times 8000 units you sold okay how much is that this is a contribution minus fixed cost will remain same 160000 yes this is going to be 408000 minus 160000 what is the profit here 408 minus 160000 is 248000 Hmm, where was 350? Where is 248,000? Why the profit is reduced from 350,000 to 248,000? What is the reason? The reason is though you have a capacity to produce 10,000 units, okay, you have a capacity, you have a relevant range of 10,000 units, but you are using capacity of only 8,000 units, you are not using fully. Uh, uh, you know available capacity therefore your fixed cost are not responding to you still you spend 160,000 yeah so it is underutilized you are you know reducing the capacity though you have capacity you are not utilizing it that is going to have an impact on your profit earlier we got three fifty thousand dollars of profit now it is two forty eight thousand okay so when capacity is not used when capacity is not used this will have an impact on your operating profit okay what happens if the capacity level is only uh, though you have 10000 units of capacity but you produced only 6000 units and you sold only 6000 units what happens come on here 6000 units times what is the variable cost 49 what is the selling price hundred dollars just because you produce only six thousand units 
can we see some change in fixed cost no fixed cost is fixed cost remain constant within the relevant range relevant range is 10000 units you produce 10000 5000 6000 8000 fixed cost will remain same that is how much 160000 yes so 6000 times 100 minus 49 what is the amount 51000 or 51 di times 6000 units 51 times 6000 units 306000 minus the fixed cost which is same now your operating income is going to be 306 minus 160 146000 146000 dollars see 350000 when used full capacity 248000 when you produced 8,000 units and now it is 146,000 when you produce only 6,000 units. When you use capacity, when you use full capacity, that will reflect in your profit. When you are performing, you know, a capacity which is less than the available capacity that will have an impact on your profit, a bad impact on your profit. So this is the reason why mostly we try to utilize maximum capacity available to get more profits. Yeah. Now, let us enter into some new topics called contribution, contribution margin, etc. Contribution. Contribution is the excess of sales over variable cost. Contribution is the sales over variable cost okay now let us take an example we can sell a product for a hundred dollars and the variable cost is seventy dollars so contribution per unit you can say contribution per unit is hundred dollars minus seven dollars seven seventy dollars it is thirty dollars each unit is going to give you a contribution of what thirty dollars this is contribution per unit and if you have in dollar amount sales $150,000 total variable costs say $70,000 what is the contribution here contribution equals to yes $80,000 $80,000 so you can calculate contribution by deducting by deducting the variable cost from sales you can calculate the contribution as an amount as a dollar per unit. Okay, now see here 20,000 units you produced and sold. And if you have a selling price of 85, your contribution will get reduced to what? 85 minus 70. So it will bring a contribution amount of $15 only against $30. So every time you have a change in your selling price, change in your variable cost, that will reflect in your contribution. Okay. Shall we write a formula for contribution? Yes. Contribution equals to S minus V. Okay. This is a basic form. Contribution increases. Contribution increases when sales increase. Okay when variable cost is controlled i am not saying decrease controlled okay and contribution decreases the other way when your sales decrease and when your variable cost increases contribution is the difference between sales and variable cost so what you need to understand is when you use only contribution, think that it is the dollar amount, like $100 of selling price minus $40 of variable cost. That is a contribution of $60. But when you say contribution ratio or contribution margin, it is expressed in percentage. It is expressed in percentage. That what is a percentage of contribution we have over the sales price in my example it is 60 percent can I say 60 percent yes it is 60 percent of hundred dollars right now when you say contribution margin 
you need to express this contribution in percentage. When you say contribution, it is a dollar amount. 100 minus 40, $50,000 minus $30,000, $20,000 is a contribution. So it has to be expressed in you know, dollar amounts. But when you say contribution margin, it has to be expressed in percentage. So let's go back to the same example. I have a selling price per unit of $100, variable cost of $40, now you see C equals to S minus V that is 100 minus 40, 60 is the contribution. Now when you see $60 over $100, you can simply say that 60% is my contribution margin from this product. From this, can we construct a formula that is C divided by S times 100. So contribution margin equals to C divided by S times 100. You see here, what is the C here? $60. What is S? $100. To get percentage, we are multiplying with 100. So it is 60%. Okay. Now, sometimes per unit may not be given here. Say, for example, sales are 150,000. Total sales. Total variable cost is say for example 100,000. You may be asked that what is the contribution margin ratio or percentage. Okay, first you need to find out what contribution, right? Contribution equals to 150,000 minus 100,000. What is that? 50,000. And contribution margin equals to 50,000 over sales of how much? 150,000 times 100 to get percentage. So 33.33% is the contribution margin. See here, when you say $100 is a sale price, variable cost is how much? What is that? We don't know, but we know that contribution is 33.33. Yes, so percentage. Then what is variable cost? Then what is variable cost? You can estimate, no? For every $100, $33 is the contribution. Then what is the variable cost? Can I say 67? Yeah, 66.67 you can say like this. So the remaining portion is variable cost. Now let us apply. One more example here. Selling price is 100. Variable cost is say for example $80. You know that the contribution is going to be $20. See here, relationship. Hmm. Okay, so now let us apply in the formula. Contribution margin equals to 20 divided by 100 times 100 to get the percentage, so 20%. So sales 100, variable cost, we don't know, but we get contribution of 20. Now you can write, what is a variable cost? What is a variable cost? 80, right. One more example, sales, sales is like $250. Contribution margin is say for example, $40, 40%. What is the variable cost? Sales 250 with a contribution margin of 40%. What is the variable cost? Excellent. It is $150. You want to cross check? Yes. $250 times 40% is $100. So when you say contribution is $100, variable cost is $150. Okay. So you can calculate like this to find out the contribution amount. The remaining is variable cost. So this S has two components, V and C. When you detect V, you will get C. When you detect C, you will get V. That's a concept. Simple, no? Because S minus V equals to C. S minus C equals to V. Yeah. Right. So now we understand about contribution and contribution margin. In contribution margin, in some textbooks, you may call this as profit volume ratio. 
not to have any confusion profit volume ratio is equal to contribution margin ratio same pb ratio cm ratio both are same you have a contribution of 62500 from this sales of 100000 and variable cost of 37500 can i have a contribution margin please contribution margin equals to what contribution divided by sales times 100 so what is the contribution margin here excellent it is 62500 divided by 100000 times 100 gives us 62.5 percent now what is the percentage of variable cost when you say that contribution margin is here contribution margin is 62.5 percent this will tell us a variable cost percentage of how much the remaining the remaining 37.5 percent 37.5 percent so when you say contribution is 62.5 variable cost is going to be 37.5 percent excellent so try to have this relationship in your mind that s v and c if this is 100 this is 40 variable cost should be 60. if this is 100 variable cost is 60 contribution should be 40. yeah right so now we understand about contribution margin ratio then what is a break-even point break-even point is the quantity or the amount of sales where the company's sales will become equal to the total cost means what no profit no loss okay at least your sales will bring your cost back but there will be no profit no loss then why should we calculate break even point which type of companies calculate break even point that and all we'll discuss in detail but at the moment break even point means your sales will become equal to the total cost okay s minus v minus f equals to zero no operating profit okay right so here the firm wants to know how many units that must be sold to reach this point at least i don't want to incur any losses or how long how much time it will take to sell this break even point units okay for this we use some formula okay before that let us see the pcvp chart i have volume of sales on you know horizontal axis and uh, cost in dollars on vertical axis my fixed cost line is here this is my fixed cost line this is my total cost line fixed and variable cost a total cost line and i will draw now a sales line sales line see my sales are going from here to here this is a sales line this is a fixed cost line okay now here the sales line intersected with the total cost line at this point this is called a break even point so i'll just draw line here which means that these many units if i sell there will be no profit no loss say 5000 units so if i sell 5000 units there will be no profit no loss what happens if we sell less than 5000 units loss this is the loss area okay say for example from zero units to 5000 units your loss is gradually decreasing and here what happens if i sell more than 5000 units yes you will enter into profit area this is a profit area more units you sell more the place you can see here this is a profit area this is called margin of safety we'll discuss about margin of safety later but a margin of safety angle of incidence is formed here and we enter into a profit area okay so this is my break even point here okay i sell 5000 units 
I am on break even point. Doesn't mean that you have to sell only 5,000 units. I will ask my salespeople that how many, how many units you will sell, okay, in the next year, right? Or I may ask you a question. I want you to sell 5,000 units. How many months will you take? How many months will you take? Sir, so two months. Okay, you'll be selling these units in two months, right? I have 10 more months. Remaining 10 months, I will enjoy the profits. What does it mean? See, you have sales, you have variable cost, sales, variable cost, but your fixed costs are recovered only in two months' time. Your sales, your variable cost, your fixed cost. Okay, Jan, Feb. In, in, in just two months' time, from 5,000 units, you recovered entire your fixed cost. So what happens from March onwards? March onwards, you will not have any fixed cost because all the fixed costs until December are recovered from the sale of these 5,000 units in two months. You have fixed costs, of course, but they have been already recovered from these 5,000 units. So the remaining months from March to December, you will have only sales and variable cost. You will have only sales and variable cost. No, I have rent, I have depreciation, I have, uh, you know, the insurance, etc. Yes, you have, but have been already recovered from these 5,000 units. So for the rest of the 10 months, you will enjoy the profit, which is equivalent to what? Contribution. So whatever be the contribution you get from March to December, that is your profit. Why? Because fixed cost is not there. Where is it gone? It has been recovered from 5,000 units of sale in two months time. This is the reason why a company is of 20 years old also calculates break-even point. Many people think that break-even point is to be calculated only for startup. No. Break-even point is calculated for even a 20 years old company. Why? Because I want to know that how many units are to be sold to break even. One month, two months, three months? Yes. The nine months I will enjoy the profit, which is contribution. Sometimes we may even use this way that operating income. How much of operating income that we are going to get from this sales budget? Okay. Or how many units you are going to sell? How many units you are going to sell to get this operating income? So this is what we are going to discuss in a analysis, CVP analysis. Yeah, right. Our business is going to spend some money. Then whether we are improving the profits, the, that, that will result in increase in the profits, that you need to check. Okay. Now, how do you calculate the break-even point? How do you calculate the break-even point? A break-even point can be calculated in units, in dollar amounts. This first formula will tell you that the number of units to be sold to break even. Then the next formula will tell you the dollar amount should be there in your sales to break even. Now let me give you an example. I have a fixed cost of $10,000. Okay, selling price of $50 per unit and the variable cost of $40. Okay, now fixed expenses divided by contribution per unit. Okay, per unit, uh, per unit, not margin, per unit. So apply this formula, fixed expenses, $10,000 divided by contribution per unit. What is the contribution here? $10, right? $10 divided by 10. So $10,000 divided by $10 will give you what? 1,000 units. What does it mean? What does it mean? If my firm sells 1,000 units, I am on break even. My business is on break even. There will be no profit, no loss. Any units I sell more than 1,000 units, yes, there will be a profit. There will be a profit. Then what is the sale? You are, selling, you are telling about the number of units 
But what is the number? What is the dollar amount? Dollar amount is going to be what is the selling price per unit? Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars times what is the quantity you want me to sell? One thousand units. Yes. So fifty thousand dollars should be the sale amount to break even. Now I just want the dollar amount with the same example. Yeah. So ten thousand dollars is a fixed cost. Total fixed cost. Yes equals to what? What is X? Fifty. What is B? What B? Therefore the contribution is going to be ten dollars. Contribution margin equals to yes ten divided by fifty times hundred. Twenty percent. Now let me apply the formula. Ten thousand dollars of fixed cost divided by contribution margin ratio. That is twenty percent. Can I have the amount, please? Ten thousand dollars divided by twenty percent. What is the amount here? It is fifty thousand. Same answer. Fifty thousand dollars. Okay. So when you want break-even point in total sales dollar, numerator remains same, but in a denominator, you should use contribution margin ratio. When you want to calculate the number of units to be sold, you need to use this fixed cost divided by unit contribution that is in dollar amount. That will give you the answer in units. This is the end of the session on uh, uh, CPP analysis. Uh, we discussed about uh, fixed cost, variable cost, the assumptions in uh, CPP analysis. We discussed about contribution, calculation of break-even point in units and dollar amounts. We'll discuss further on CPP analysis in the next session. Till then. Take care and have a good time. Bye-bye.